Okay, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the Twilio function handler and how that integrates with our Google Sheets. So the first thing we're gonna look at is how to actually access that function from the Immigration Policy Labs. I'm gonna to go to the Twilio functions. Um, I'm gonna to go to the post survey data handler. And this is what we're gonna copy and paste into Twilio. There's a couple notes about things we'll have to update. So we'll go through those together. Um, and other than that, there's also a neat trick here. If you just click on raw, um, it allows you to do a quick copy and paste just to make that a little bit easier. So here I am in Twilio, I'm looking at my functions um, and we could make a new function from here. Another way to think about this is in our flow, let's say this is um, just a sample flow. Let's say we wanna run a function off of Q2. So over here, I'm going to click run function. I think I need to drag this out. And then if there's a reply here, I will um, connect to my function. Just make sure that's connected. And then if that is successful, I will just continue on with that question. Question two is answered. Um, we'll run this function. So you'll see how right now there's no function that it's hooked up to. So we would need to either select one of these functions. Um, and that's what we're going to work on now is creating a new function that we can select. So let's go back to our functions. And let's just do, we'll do a blank function since we have code that we're going to copy and paste in. Um, and we get to title it, function name, let's say test um, Twilio handler, since that's kind of at a test, sure. All right, um, we copy and paste that into our clipboard, so I'm going to paste that whole thing down here. And what we're looking at is our, um, the code that we need to get information in from our survey and then post it over to the Google Sheets. So there's a couple things that we'll look at here. Um, each of these things that starts with a function is just that. It's a function, it's a small block of code, and it's responsible for doing one thing. At the top here are what I'm going to refer to as helper functions. They are responsible for one thing and they just help everything run smoothly. When we're dealing with requests and responses from the Google API, um, we want to retry in case of an error or in case of a timeout. And so that's part of what these functions do is, is handle some retry logic and some error handling so that we can be smart about what kind of responses we're getting back from the Google API. So we'll scroll through a couple of these. Um, this function, get headers, that's getting these headers from our Google Sheets. So if we look at um, the Google Sheets that we have, uh, these are these are our headers. This function, this is the function responsible for actually posting the data. So you can think of getting the data as reading the headers out and then posting the data as writing that data in. Um, this is just creating some wait time. So in case we do get a, um, a throttle response back from Google API, just meaning that it's overloaded with requests, we can wait a little bit and then um, hit it with another request. So the Twilio function has a runtime of, I think about 10 seconds. So it will continue running for 10 seconds um, and it'll allow us to retry that request if something does time out. Um, and this is just actually allowing us to sort of connect with that actual um, Google Sheet that we're looking for. So this exports site handler, this is the actual Twilio function. So this is really where we're gonna, our, our entry point into this function. Um, I have a console log line, this just logs out. So if there's any debugging that you're doing, um, these logs will show up down here. They are not persistent, so they will disappear after um, a couple minutes or after you leave the page and then refresh. But um, if you are just, you know, wanting to see that your function did get invoked, then that law will show up down here. Okay, there's a couple of things that we need 
in order to make authenticate our request with Google Sheets. Um, and that's what this part is doing here. It's actually giving us a token that's going to help us authenticate the, um, the data that's going back and forth. So in order to do that, you need your client email, which you get when you set up your Google project. And then you also need the um, key that is also provided. It's that really long thing that you've gotten. So ideally, this whole key would live in these config variables. And that's where the client email is living. So let's look at, um, yeah, let's go over into our config variables. Actually, real quick before I leave this page, I'm just gonna save it. It's never a bad idea to continue to save your function as you're working on things. So this is just where, um, one, it's where some dependencies will live. So in order to actually invoke this function, we do have a Google API dependency. So you'll wanna make sure that you've entered that in. Um, and I think these other dependencies are just given um, by default by Twilio because they're, they're used in the Twilio export and the Twilio handler. So just make sure you have the Google API and turn in and then your client email. So again, you're just gonna copy and paste the value that Google gives you over here. Sheet ID as well, just copy and paste that value. So the sheet ID comes from the URL up here um, between these two slashes. So grab that sheet ID and then copy and paste it in here. This is a little bit more secure because you have these variables outside of your function. Um, and then as you can see, the format changes so that it's harder for anyone to read the variables and access those variables. However, this input does have a limit of 140 characters and that key is longer than that. If you're interested in creating a, like using best practices and um, keeping that on your local machine out of the code, then there are alternative ways, but keep in mind that you will need to set up a developer environment um, and be comfortable deploying code from your, um, from your terminal. The way this is set up right now is it is password protected um, and it's a little bit simpler because it allows you to copy and paste that in. But I just want to make sure everyone is aware of that. All right, so given that we just talked about, we need the client email that's in our config. Um, we need this RSA key. So I'm going to go ahead. I have mine in another function, so I'm just going to go grab it from there. You can see it's just really long. It's just gonna be one long string. Um, you can scroll over to see the rest of it, but I'm not going to do that because I wanna keep it secure for the purposes of this video. So if we keep scrolling, we can see that um, there's some notes here. So feel free to read those just to understand a little bit more about what's going on. Um, this event object is called with the exports.handler. We'll talk more about this, but this includes some information specific to our function. So in this case, we wanted to add a property to that function, date, and so we can just generate, this just generates a new date. Um, so it's likely that you'll wanna have a date. If you do not wanna have a date, um, and specifically if you do not have a date header, then you'll want to delete this line. So keep that in mind. So this line 157, this is just authorizing. Um, so we're using that, that token that we've generated and we're calling um, an action on it. And so that's going to, again, start this action of communicating with the Google Sheets. So we have just error handling if something goes wrong. Um, Otherwise, we are going to just start trying to write our data over to the Google Sheets. I have this line here uh, just in case you want to test error handling. So um, we'll, we can talk about that in another video, but the documentation also talks about a method to include a function for error handling. And if you want to test that, um, specifically if you want to force this function to fail to see how the error gets handled, you can uncomment this line. 
Uncommenting just means to remove these two slashes so that the code actually runs. If these two slashes are here, then the code was completely ignored and this callback line, um, which will sort of indicate that we've had success with our function, will run instead. So just wanna make sure everyone is aware of that.